Good morning, Tuesday, August 6th. Uh, this is Sheriff Jeff Smith from Montgomery County. Uh, welcome to Montgomery County Now. Storms, scams, shows, and showstoppers. The most connected man on earth and family partnerships on today's show. Welcome to Montgomery County Now, made of something stronger. The podcast that brings you the latest news, interviews, and a glimpse into the future with Sheriff Jeff Smith. Get ready to dive into the heart of Montgomery County and discover what makes it truly special. From community updates to thought-provoking conversations, this podcast is your window into the pulse of our county. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us on this captivating journey with Sheriff Jeff Smith. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We always uh, love having you here, and, and good to see you. Good to have you tune in today. Um, moving right along, let's talk about the storms that have been hitting our, our counties and our local areas. Wow, what's going on with our weather? Um, we got a little bit lucky last night. Our partners and our friends to the North Fulton County got hit a little harder than we did, but the amount of tornadoes and extreme, extreme uh, thunderstorms and heavy rain, um, and this weekend, uh, heavy rain potential from uh, Tropical Storm Debbie traveling up the East Coast. So just be uh, vigilant, pay attention. Uh, be prepared, and, and that's something we certainly pay close attention to here at our office. Uh, tonight, I'm excited to say we got National Night Out in Montgomery County. Special thanks to the Amsterdam uh, Rec Department, Amsterdam Police, and Canajeri Police. They do a phenomenal job, so we'll be participating in both of them, one in the city of Amsterdam and one in the village of Canajeri. Uh, thank you for the invites, and, and thank you for the partnership. Hope to see you out there. National Night Out is all about community partnerships and and creating relationships with your local law enforcement. So stop by and say hi. Uh, the Fond of Boil Water was uh, lifted recently, which I know is very uh, welcoming to many people in the village of Fonda and the town of Mohawk. That was a long time coming, and uh, they worked hard and have things rectified, so that's a good thing. Uh, this past weekend, we had a canine car show fundraiser at Checkers Out Speedway just outside of Fonda in the town of Mohawk right at the county line. Uh, thankful for that. We raised some money for our canine program. That's always very important. How about the Amsterdam Mohawks and Coach Griffin and uh, Brian Spagnola uh, with a three-peat championship? Uh, they won the championship again this summer. Phenomenal organization out there. We've had Brian on our, our show as a guest. And if you've never been to a Mohawks game, put it on your radar for next year. You won't be disappointed. They do a great job entertaining. Uh, sadly, we always got to talk about scams. Uh, there's people out there that are taking advantage of the pe the people and their hard-earned money in Montgomery County. Uh, most recently, we had someone reach out to a uh, a young lady and said that she had missed jury duty, and they said that they were our office calling. And they threatened her with a six thousand dollar fine, and that she had to pay this money instantly. And they wanted her to stay on the phone so that they could follow her to the bank and get the information. All that is bad, you know, folks. We say all the time, if you haven't generated that phone call or you haven't generated that contact, then just simply hang up. Never, ever give your personal information out. Certainly never go buy gift cards or provide money or send things to people whom you don't know who it is. And last but not least, contact your local law enforcement or your local sheriff and ask questions. That's what we're here for. We want to protect you. You work hard for your money. Um, you deserve not to be uh, scammed and taken advantage of. And together, we can actually make a difference in this endeavor. Uh, wellness training. We always talk about mental mental health and 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 wellness for first responders, especially uh, the members here at the sheriff's office. Uh, Sergeant Luke Payne and Investigator Cody Fabian recently attended a two day seminar about wellness training, and they've kind of become the liaisons here at our office uh, to reach out to our staff and and make sure that uh, we're in the right place and that our our heads and our mental health is going well, and we can take care of one another. So that's very very important. Last week, I attended the New York State Sheriff's Association Summer Training Conference. Um, mm -hmm. You know, training is very, very important to all of us, including the sheriff. There's constant changes in legislation, constant changes in policies and best practices. You're know, getting together with the other sheriffs and, and networking and, and learning some of the problems that they've had and, and talking through some of the issues is invaluable. And I bring that information back to our office and our constituents. So it was a good day for us. Tomorrow, uh, the sheriff and members of this office have sponsored a free swim day uh, at the uh, Amsterdam City Pool. So everybody can go and swim for free. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. 
not as hot as it's been, but hopefully uh, many, many of our youth can get out there and have a good day and enjoy some swim time for free. Um, as always, we're always recruiting and, and trying to work on recruitment and retention here at the office. We've got a couple correction officer positions open. Uh, we've posted that on our social media. So don't be afraid to uh, reach out to us. Come take a tour, uh, fill out an application. It, it might be the career for you. Uh, we wrapped up a burglary case on Queen Anne uh, in the town of Florida. Uh, we made an arrest on that. that. That's been posted on our social media site and our media release page. Um, good work by the Gloversville Police Department uh, and our agency working together and sharing information. So we're thankful for that. Our EMS division has been swamped, um, answering numerous EMS calls countywide, doing a great job. That continues to grow and become more and more popular with our constituents. Um, you know, we're in the budget season here, so we'll be working on that for 2025, but something that we want to continue to improve and continue to make available to our constituents uh, and, and so that we can get ambulances in a timely manner and get treatment to the people that desperately need it. Road closures have been affecting our county. Uh, you know, we've talked about this with construction, State Highway 162, Sprakers Hill Road, uh, Corbin Hill Road, and then there was just a town hall meeting hosted by the county executive about um, Switzer Hill Road. So, you know, these road closures are temporary while some of this construction gets completed and then some a little more permanent than others, but please be patient, be courteous, uh, follow the detour signs are there for a reason, respect people who don't usually have that volume of traffic. We receive numerous complaints each and every day about the, the traffic and the truck traffic and the speeds and, you know, we're doing the best that we can, but, uh, Pay attention to those things, please, when you're out there on our highways. And recently, we provided a uh, $750 donation to uh, AIM Autism fundraiser at the Fonda Speedway. And that, that was a result of uh, money raised with our autism awareness shirts that we sold earlier in the year. So very thankful to be able to do that. 100% uh, of the profits from those things that we advertise goes to those charities and goes to those great causes. So uh, happy to see the pictures of the deputies down there writing out the check and, and, and issuing it and being part of uh, something that hopefully can make a difference in people's lives. So as you can see, all of that that we just talked about has nothing to do with the calls for service, um, the non-felony arrests that we're making each and every day. Uh, certainly retail theft has been a big problem for us. And the traffic complaints, you know, they continue to come in. We continue to do the best we can. We say it all the time to slow down, leave early, take your time. Don't drive distracted. Um, be respectful of others. Uh, you know, I can't say that message enough, and we repeat that each and every show. So working together with the men and women here at the office, we're very, very busy. We're here for you. Don't be afraid to reach out to us. And uh, that's a brief overcap of the last couple of weeks. So, folks, this is the one-year anniversary of our show, and that is amazing to me that this year has flown by so quickly. Time goes by when you're having fun, they say, and boy, I'll tell you. The time really, really does fly here at the office, but we got a special guest on today, and it's the most connected man on earth, Mr. Chris Dancy. And Chris Dancy lives locally here, and he's become a friend of us, a friend of mine, and uh, he also produces the podcast for us. So he uh, he works with us here at the sheriff's office. He's helped us tremendously uh, with technology and, and IT things and being innovative, things that I've never even heard of. He's He's got us on board. So Chris, welcome to the show. Nice to see you, Sheriff Jeff. I'll tell you, uh, you know, I was just talking about how it's been a year already, and this is a year anniversary, and that's that's really why you're the guest today, because you and I started this thing a year ago, and it was really your vision and, and what you do behind the scenes, and it was time for you to come out from behind the scenes. <laughs> I didn't want to. It's uh, Usually I'm back here making the notes as you're rattling off the news and the guests are speaking, but uh, I thought I'd make an exception. <laughs> Well, you do a great job for us. And uh, can you tell tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and who you are? I mean, uh, you, you quote of the most connected man on earth. I mean, explain a little bit about where that came from and what you do. Well, I like you, I'm 55. I graduated high school in 1987 from a rural community in Maryland. My family is originally from upstate New York, Albany, Schenectady. Mom actually was born in a little, little village called Crown Point, way up uh, up north. Um, they left in 1967. I was born in Maryland. I decided two years ago, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, just to kind of get up and move to Montgomery County. But I'll tell you more about that in a minute. You know, I always say, you know, 
with Google, you never can really control what the world knows about you because Google will just make something up. But I became known as the world's most connected person in 2014 when I did an interview with a local news station where I showed them some of the sensors I was wearing and how I was monitoring my physical health and all these other things. And it showed up in the news and then all of a sudden somebody else interviewed me and it became this snowball effect. But the net net of it is in 2008, I was about 320 pounds. I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. I drank maybe a little too much. Um, and I thought to myself, why am I 40 years old? My life is a mess. And I just don't know how to get it under control. And I went to my computer and I went to look something up on the internet and it was like my whole history. You know, the, your browser history is there. And I looked at it and I thought, my computer knows more about me than I do. So I decided to create a little program. I'm kind of a computer nerd. Um, they just watched me all day long and it started organizing my entire life whenever I did anything with technology. And then slowly but surely it learned enough AI, which is now everywhere, but in 2008, it was still really new. Um, hey, don't do this, do that. And then boom, four years later, I was the world's most connected man. And then a TV show on Netflix, Darknet. It's either on Netflix or Showtime if you want to go watch it. It goes back and forth. Uh, and then a book deal in 2018 and a bunch of shows and just shot a spot for Good Morning America, which was released yesterday. I'll send it to you. I forgot. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm strangely a D-list internet celebrity who loves technology when used for human good. Well, I'll tell you, Chris, you're, uh, so to a guy like, first of all, I'm 55. I didn't realize that. I thought I was like 29, but. <laughs> and, and I'm 14 if we want to yeah. go. There. <laughs> but uh, your vision and, and the way you perceive technology just blows us away here and and how you've helped the sheriff's office um, develop some programs and and do things a little differently and and try to at least I don't want to say get ahead of the curve because we'll probably never do that but at least try to stay caught up I think is a, a safe way for us to describe it on our end at least yeah well Jack, I don't you say know, we're cutting edge but I, you know I this is the thing it's like I, I kind of wish we could do a podcast where we just walked around your facility because usually most people are going there have a problem so they never get to visit you know you've got emergency management you know you've got someone being arrested someone visiting someone or going to work but I think if you could walk around your facility and see it like I do it is pretty cutting edge I mean your cars literally have I think it was like a system that watches license plates in real time and like checks them. And you've got cameras and all, you know, these advanced door systems and you're a lot further than you think, but uh, we should do a tour one time around the facility. Just a nice yeah, tour. We can definitely do that. That's a great idea. We've, uh, we did hold an open house here one time and it was very successful. And then COVID came and we kind of got off that. We should, we should consider doing something like that. Yeah. Like, you know, do a live podcast during the open house. That'd be cool. Yeah. But you well, know, uh, with the sheriff's office, what we, what I, what I, when I met you, well, one of the things I wanted to do was really focus on like how can we make you more accessible, and that's that was one of the reasons I thought the podcast was so important. You know, when you look at all the different um, ways that people get information on Montgomery County, like we don't really use the newspapers anymore. And I looked at like the news, uh, Facebook pages, the news, social feeds, just the news. The sheriff's office has the biggest reach. You know. I think the only person more popular than you and it's, you know, and that's just because some days he's funny. Skeeter. I, I didn't even know the Skeeter person existed, but people love the Skeeter person, but you have quite the reach. Well, I think, I hope that that's, that's a, the result of providing quality information to the public yeah. and being accessible to the public yeah. and, and being transparent. I yeah. mean, those are, those are things that I really value. And, you know, when I took office as a sheriff, something that I really wanted to concentrate on because this is the people's house. You know, this is this is not about me. It's about the constituents that we serve. And we're far from perfect. I'm far from perfect. But Chris, I think you, you've you known me long enough now to realize that I care and, and I will try to fix what we can and I'll try to do what we can. And, you know, what you've done for us is helping in that endeavor. So, yeah. so thank you for the work you do. You know, I know you don't like me to talk about you, but everyone does. But you know, something I think is a testament to most people, you know, whether they like you or don't like you, because you listen, you'll get haters all over life. You and I have been alive long enough to know that. Yep. Is both county executives, the former Matt Asimfort and the new one, uh, Bob Pertel, said something to me in, in different ways, but it was both the same thing. Out of all the people they know in the county, there's only one person they know that regardless of what you think will always do the right thing. And they say it's you, Jeff Smith. And I, you know, I, personally, I've seen that. I've seen a lot of stuff thrown at you. 
don't get embarrassed, but I think it is a, a true testament. And I, mark my words, they will name a highway after you at some point. <laughs> well, hopefully it's a highway that people aren't speeding on because that's <laughs> that's a common common thing that we uh, we constantly deal with here at the office. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's not just about me or this office either, Chris. You've done a ton of stuff for the county and public health and personnel and the county executive's office. So you've, you've really taken a, uh, a stronghold here on trying to be that supportive citizen because, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is your community too, right? Yeah, you know, a lot of people, when they meet me, and it's really weird in Montgomery County, I'll, I'll meet folks and they'll either know of me or, you know, I was in Amst I was in the Amsterdam Walmart two days ago with my spouse and uh, some teenager, you're Chris Dancy. I'm like, what are you doing here? And it still kind of blows my mind. People like know me, um, but it was you know, when I looked at all the places I couldn't move, Montgomery County made a lot of sense. And people still to this day act like, well, why Montgomery County? You know, and I thought I'd share a couple of things with you, if you don't, so that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important for folks to know, especially in our county. Uh, you know, we call it our podcast Montgomery County now, but, you know, I think the bigger question is why Montgomery County is it's just a very simple overview. So don't get overwhelmed. You know, while a lot of New York State is people are like leaving and like they're getting out. You know, Montgomery County is one of the few places that's growing and change, grow, uh, staying neutral and growing. So we've actually grown since then. The other thing is when you think about housing, right? Out of all the different counties in Montgomery uh, and in the state of New York, Montgomery County is now this year, as of two weeks ago, number nine for housing growth. Um, so our housing prices are increasing fastest and we're building more out of all the other counties, number nine, we're in the top 10. That's unprecedented. We were in the 30s just last year. So, you know, people from the capital region are coming here. I'm sure you've seen it. You know, they're coming out from Saratoga Springs. Most people can't afford to, to live in Saratoga Springs if they work there. So it's really something interesting. We've all been through the past couple of weeks. If you're watching this in the future, this was in the summer of 2024. It's getting hot. You know, I'm always warning the sheriff, be careful out there because they love to do events outside. So I'd be careful out there. When you look at the overall trends though, Fonda and Montgomery County are actually have more comfortable days, like actually livable days, almost seven months of it. Right now we get like, you need jackets in the, in the winter, but it's unprecedented compared to the rest of the country. When you think about just disasters, like everything, you know, got fires here, you got drought there. You know, again, if you zoom up up to this little corner up here, we don't have, a, and we have our flood problems in the in the central part of the county, but we don't have a lot of issues and it's not actually projected to have any. But most interestingly, some of the climate models and some of the disaster models uh, for the entire country, I mined the data for it. And you'll see, hopefully on this slide here, there's some purple sections. You can see it out here in the, in the mountains of uh, the Rocky Mountains. You can see a little slice up here, up here in Montana but you'll see a lot of this purple way up here in the East Coast going all the way down. See that little purple slot right there? That's us. That's us. We are literally in one of the safest, most resilient parts of the entire country for the next 30 years. We've got a thriving agriculture community and so much more. And I think people forget if you, if you go back and roll back all the AI and all the computers and things, like what do you actually need? You need food, you need water, you need community and you need access. For the most part, we have amazing roads. For the most part, we've got a good water supply in most parts of the county. We've got a great farming community and we've got partners like you and the other uh, folks. So I got involved with the county because I just thought we need to lift ourselves up and stop thinking that we're some left behind rural community that the time is forgot. Because if we're lucky enough to live another five years, we're gonna be one of the communities people are racing to. I agree. I think it's great. And and I love I love how you analyze that data to help people like me understand that people that have lived here our whole lives. I think we lose sight of those things. You know, I've always been a, a proponent and maybe it's because I've grown up my whole life in law enforcement. But I've said, if you also have a strong sheriff and a strong sheriff's office, it helps people want to live in the county. It helps businesses want to open business in the county. Just like if you have strong school districts, it helps people want to raise their families in a county. I'm married. I'm teacher. married to a teacher. <laughs> yeah. So, so I agree. I think they all go hand in hand, and it's part of the entire package that makes Montgomery County desirable. And I think, 
you know, Matt Ossenfort started it. Hopefully the new county executive can continue it. I think Montgomery County is on the map like it's never been before, except way back maybe in the industrialization era, you know, but uh, I'm proud to live here and I'm I'm proud of the people that work here and and the visitors that come here and say good things about us. I mean, so that's part of the part of the reason for this show. Folks, if you're listening to this show and you're listening to Chris Dancy's message, this is a special one year anniversary show. Share the information out there. Get it out to your friends and family. Have them listen in. We go over events that happen at the office every every show, every couple of weeks. We have a great guest, and then we talk about events that we can get out locally here and partner. And that's what what we'll do at the end of today's show. So yeah, I, I love the format you created because it was really about what's happening. Like you always start off that show, what's going on. You always talk to this am amazing guest, and we've had. You know, I'll go ahead again and share some of these guests. We've had just remarkable guests over the years. You've got Stuart Friesen, Joe Seiss, uh, Rob Spinaglia, uh, Felix, uh, Dave Jordan. You've had uh, Sarah. I mean, again, I could read these names all day long, but you try to bring on, I think, what I would call local folks who understand the county. And not only that, but can I tease your new website you've been working on? I know you and some of your staff have been building this. Yeah, we're getting close to uh, having it be ready, but yeah, go ahead. So what's great about this new site is you've really thought about the community. You've made it quick and easy for people to go, quickly send you a message directly, leave an anonymous tip. You've got an, a complete new way to get donations, whether it be canines or the kids on, uh, kids on camp. You've even got a history section here where people can learn about all the different sheriffs that have ever been in Montgomery County. Do you know we have one of the first female sheriffs in the nation? Again, Montgomery County making making the way. And then you can explore our different villages. Well, I think it's really neat. You should come in and actually look at the people behind the sheriff's county, uh, the sheriff's office in real time. And, and if you have a, a program or request, you can come in here and, and do those types of things. So whether it's a permit or anything else, you can get in there. On top of that, you've got the way your site connects to other sites. So soon we're looking for help at the uh, at the sheriff's office. You'll be able to interface with a new HR system that makes applying and getting a job in the county and working with your county easier than ever. So I'm just so excited. I think, you know, without your commitment to what you sometimes think might be a little radical technology, uh, it wouldn't have happened. So I, I really appreciate you taking time to get to know me, to get to know my family, to listen to my complaints about everything. Uh, mm -hmm. you're really remarkable. And you and your spouse, Becky, uh, have raised an amazing son in Justin and have such a great department. I'm so proud to be a resident of Montgomery County. That's, uh, that's very nice to hear, Chris. I appreciate the kind words. And uh, I feel the same way, you know, your vision and, and your ability to to get us to think in different ways has been innovative uh, at, at, at the least here at the office. So thanks for taking the time to join us as today's guest and, and for being our one year anniversary guest. We'll continue to improve, continue to work hard for our constituents and uh, you know, the stuff you do is amazing. So be proud of what you do. Thank you, sir. I'll let you get back. Uh, I'll let you back to the, the events. All right, thanks, Chris. What a great guest, Chris Dancy. Fab, fabulous person, uh, helped our office more than you can imagine. You know, Google Chris, learn more about him, learn about some of the things he's doing here for office and then pay attention for that website. You know, it's not ready yet completely. We're still tweaking it and and making some changes here and there, but soon we'll be making a big, uh, a big IT and technology announcement when that's ready to go and sharing it with the, with the public. Uh, let's talk about some events that are coming up here in the county. This is the segment of the show that we just love to partner with people and have you join us in the public so that we can talk, share ideas, share complaints, uh, tell us what's going on, because we're only as strong as our relationship with the public, and that's that's a fact. Um, I already talked about a couple of things, but I want to reiterate them again. Tomorrow's a free swim day. Uh, tell all the children that and all the youth that want to go out and swim for free at the Amsterdam City Pool that it's sponsored by the sheriff and the sheriff's office tomorrow. Get out there and take advantage of it. No cost whatsoever. National night out tonight and uh, 5 p.m. It starts in the city of Amsterdam Veterans Park and six o'clock in Kinajahari at Wagner Square. So uh, we got people at each place and I'm gonna try to catch them both. So come out and say hi to the sheriff, uh, say hi to our staff and walk around and be a, be a true community partner. Um, there's a Bridge Street block party at St. Johnsville on the 10th, uh, August 10th. Uh, that's always a great event up there in the village of St. Johnsville. It's a family fun day. 
uh, on the 10th at 11 a.m. at the United Presbyterian Church, 25 Church Street in Amsterdam. And this Friday, we have our annual Office for Aging Canine Dare Golf Tournament at the Kanjari Country Club. Um, weather's not looking too great right now, but there's time for that straight now, so we'll see. But that's an important fundraiser. Office for Aging does a great job for our senior population in the county, and we try to give them a large chunk of, of all the money created in that event to help with the, the meals program and transportation and anything that they can do to help our senior population. That's it for today, folks. Uh, super proud of this show. You know, it's been one year, uh, one year anniversary. Um, check us out, share the information, uh, be kind and, and be courteous of others. You know, as I've said earlier in the show, we're not perfect, but we're here for you. 518-853-5500 is our general business line. If you have any needs or any questions, never hesitate to call 24-7-911 for any emergency. And we hope to see you soon and, and we hope to serve you well. And thanks for joining us today on Montgomery County Now. Thank you for tuning in to Montgomery County Now, made of something stronger. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and gained valuable insights from our interview and updates. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay connected with Sheriff Jeff Smith and never miss an episode. Join us next time as we continue to explore the stories, people, and events that shape Montgomery County. Until then, remember, we are made of something stronger.